We are a justice-making, truth-seeking people. We share a reverence for the mystery of life. We are a in your beloved community. Come, let us worship together.
Good morning, Birmingham Unitarian Church. It's good to be together again. Whether you are joining us here in the sanctuary, remotely via Zoom, or watching this recording later, it's good to connect with you. As a multi-platform church, it is important for us to build a bridge between online and in-person participants. We're calling this connection opportunity, greeting our virtual neighbors. First, we will project the image of folks who are currently on Zoom up here on the screen and ask them to turn on their cameras and give us a wave. Hi, Mom. <laughs> now, we who are gathered in the sanctuary will face, turn and face the camera at the back and give them a wave. Whenever and however we connect with BUC, we are building BUC. At home, on campus, in the world, every day, we are Birmingham Unitarian Church and we are building the beloved community. We join together with other Unitarian Universalists around the world as we light our chalice with the words, Open to Unexpected Answers by Julianne Lepp. We seek our place in the world and the answers to our heart's deep questions. As we seek, may our hearts be open to unexpected answers. May the light of our chalice remind us this is a community of warmth, of wisdom, and welcoming of multiple truths. The morning's first hymn <clears throat> is Where is Our Holy Church? It's number 113 in the gray hymnal and we will sing the first three verses. Please stand as you're willing and able. I will admit when this theme was written, Reverend Mandy was a part of this service. So there's a key question here being asked that is not going to be answered. Uh, she posed, why can't we say evangelism? And uh, as luck would have it, she got a trip to the Cincinnati Zoo with her new, with her new child. So we're not gonna answer that question, but we will be addressing some of the ways we look at the church and ways we have spread it, spread the message, right? Because Unitarian Universalism has something for just about everybody. So much to offer the modern world. Why are we so shy about it? It's time to let our UU flags fly. Share the joy that we have found in our living tradition. And one thing to note, 
we are going to be talking about signs and evangelism through the Environmental Action Committee with Jane O'Neill. We have available the yard signs that you've seen in front, uh, the We Believe statements uh, in this house, uh, or vote as if. Um, if you're interested in one of those signs, I'll make sure that we have a sheet in with coffee hour, and I'll, get, uh, I'll make sure you get her email, and we get people interested, some signs ordered. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. One way we live out this mission is by giving half our weekly offering to a nonprofit organization that shares our values and addresses needs in one of these areas. Environmental action, economic justice, civic engagement, and, ra and racial justice. We support a new organization each month. The recipient of our plate is the Michigan Coalition to Prevent Gun Violence. Progress has been made in Michigan with the passage of universal background checks, safe storage laws, red and red flag laws, and there's so much more we can do. The Michigan Coalition to Prevent Gun Violence continues its work on evidence-based policies and community education in support of further actions to address the epidemic of gun violence in our state and nationally. In 2018, BUC passed a resolution affirming the need for changes in law and society to address these issues. And our support for the coalition's work is in keeping with this resolution. Every dollar of support can help save lives. Let there be an offering in support of our beloved community and organizations that build the world we dream about. This morning's offering will now be received with gratitude.
We are a church of open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. With gratitude, we dedicate this offering to the good works of our congregation and dedicate ourselves to its service. We've come to the time in our service where we like to look back on some of the joys and sorrows shared with us from the last week. We have one this week. Virgil Pulver has his driver's license. <laughs> I'm sorry, there, driver's license. Uh, so everybody stop wearing your uh, seatbelt. We've got another safe driver on the road. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge all of the joys and sorrows that are not spoken within our community. And uh, after a short prayer, take a moment of silence to reflect. This is Ultimate Grace by Ma Teresa Bustillo Gallardo. Ultimate Grace, the heart of every matter, is in perfection and imperfection, in all senses and tenses, in moments of every right and wrong, presenting choices to inquiring hearts. You are in the purpose and the journey of mishaps. You are in moments of understanding and misunderstanding. We have to seek and invoke you and enable the work of your spirit. As prayer, it is an articulated common dream. We invoke our ultimate concern for the work of faith. We long to be hand in hand, creating a world where everyone belongs. Free us from our hindrances, make invisible things visible. The voiceless heard, lay what is hidden before us. Make the chained unbound, and the doubting believe. What is confusing, let clarify. As hardened hearts grow soft to the touch, may we come in fullness with gratefulness and faithfulness to one another. May we speak in kind conversing, close, disclosing our truths with care, expressing our practical wisdom to learn of its practical limits. For the world was not meant to be possessed by a singular truth, but to be built together upon revelations. O oh, universe, with the stars in your hair, you have shown that great things emerge from humble beginnings, no matter how flawed and lacking. That one story in a prison, in a cave, destitution, poverty, if lived in all sincerity, can liberate from darkness the many. May our eyes seek to appreciate, our breaths to dedicate power, our hands to warm each other when loving fearlessly, we are invincible. When free will is deliberate, we are pivotal. When dreaming together, we are infinite. Remind us of the very questions that we have turned away from, that we have thought could not be answered or are impossible to be answered. Dear universal intelligence, your embrace contains everything but confines nothing. In the ever insistence of existence, may this one moment count.
So, how did you get here? Like here to Birmingham Unitarian Church. Was it through research? Through someone you know? Uh, for me, it was actually an online quiz called Beliefomatic. <laughs> it spit out two answers Quaker and Unitarian Universalist. Uh, yeah, I tried Unitarian Universalist first. Nothing against the Quakers. I, I actually am an atheist. I can't get behind the idea of a god. Never have been able to. It's just something that wasn't there for me. So, our first service here at Birmingham Unitarian Church was actually a rope Sunday, a rite of passage. And we were blown away to see those kids come up and to have a tradition in a church that not just teaches you doctrine, but teaches you how to look, analyze, find your own feelings, and then articulate them. Don't just stand and stomp your foot and say, no, this is the belief. So, you know, Sign us up. Here we are, 20 years later. Aside from online quizzes, though, how, how do we get the word out? So I tried to think of two examples. Uh, I mean, can you really advertise this, uh, this K uh, association that we call a church? Can you really, um, you know, really summarize this in an easy way. Can you do it in quiet ways or out loud? Can our questioning ways be summarized with a pithy riddle, such as uh, UUA has three letters, what has four letters, never has five letters, always has seven letters, that sometimes has nine. Right? UUA, what, yeah. Right. We may look for meaning in the seemingly absurd or silly, but we find it, and we get discussion out of it, and we get understanding with one another. I've never really been much of a joiner. Uh, I didn't join UUA because I decided I didn't join Birmingham Unitarian Church because it was aspirational. I joined it because it challenged me and it placed the emphasis on doing. I was the happiest, laziest atheist to start coming to church on a Sunday. Right? Through the prism of BUC, I see things broken out through understanding, compassion, different viewpoints. I love it. I come out of here thinking something a little bit differently every week, every conversation. I can tell one story that went the quiet way. Uh, there was a guy I knew from years ago. Just happened to meet up, meet up with him. And he says, oh, I just had married. We just got married, had kids. Why don't I come over for dinner? And we did, and I got to meet Val and uh, Taylor and Colin, and uh, it was pretty darn cool. And then they just kind of dropped out from our life. There was one maybe chance encounter, this kooky church that we started going to while we were talking about it. So that's three people in 20 years. I, I, I suppose I should say I'm going for quality better than quantity. But that's not to say I don't bring it up, right? I live it in my values every day. In the understanding I bring to things, when I can sit down between two people and say, wait, 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 listen, you're both agreeing with each other very loudly, but using slightly different words. There's, there's a common ground here that you need to find. So. 
then again, maybe it's something in my upbringing that just, I can't say it out loud that often. I, I'm not the kind of person to do big things, right? I just am a big thing. <laughs> right, my upbringing, that wonderful mid 70s, early 80s combination of uh, messages, the do as I say, not as I do, coupled with uh, the wonderful actions speak louder than words. Blame my parents for actually making me believe that. Somewhere between those conflicting statements, I learned to live my peace, taking yet another pithy slogan, home is where the heart is, really to heart, and saying, if I can't be comfortable with my own heart, I'm not going to be comfortable anywhere. And that was a bit of a revelation, right? Finding the small ways that add up every day, do the things you need to. Uh, and believe it or not, I really began life as an introvert. I was the shy kid. I was the quiet one. I was the alien David Attenborough sitting, watching society, trying to puzzle out what was happening. Why do people shake hands? What, what does that nod mean? You know, why are trash cans green? You know? <laughs> sound like pretty familiar questions to a lot of people, I imagine. No? <laughs> um, but through that time, I spent gleefully searching through card catalogs, trying to find answers to those questions. It was then that the heady mix of uh, the scientific process that I was being taught in school, as well as the uh, setup for the manufacturing line or manual labor, right? The, uh, the, the typical uh, full of untapped potential. Derek is so much not quite meeting his goals, you know? Yeah. That comes to one time in 1992, in March, when after being prepped with all this scientific process, I, I was, I remember the moment, it's the first time I gave blood. Laid down, 17 years old, had a permission slip from my parents, I was excited. One donation helps four people, that's amazing. Except, as I laid down on the table and the phlebotomist inserted the needle, my grandfather died at the same time. And the irrational thought popped in. I killed my grandfather by giving my blood. And I couldn't shake it. It was years, years I was wrestling with this. And it was, I knew, completely irrational. How, you know? So finally, I sat down, I faced my fear, set the appointment, nervously went in again. This time a distant cousin got sick. So hey, further away, getting better. Uh, but you know, it, it taught me, it, take those irrational things, those things, those mental barriers that get stuck in your head, and don't let them define you. Find a way to work with them work through them, and go beyond. And that actually ended up being a sign of its own, right? Because here, here it was, decades later, gallons later, three years ago, I was diagnosed with leukemia. And I was transfusion dependent for about a year. And I ended up getting back just about every single one of those pints. And... Uh, I remember having long conversations with the nurses in the transfusion unit. And uh, usually it'd start out with something along the lines of, you know, I, I would be pale as a ghost, barely able to walk in, so anemic. And uh, the first thing I would say to them is, lying here feels so good knowing that my blood helps so many other people in similar situations. It just made me feel so good. Getting over that irrational thought led me to being a better person. And 
I talked about that kooky church. I still mentioned BUC to the nurses. And I don't know if they ever came or not. If they did, they never said hello. But you know what? Just by admitting I was an atheist, I was happy I was helping people out of the goodness of my heart. And I changed a life that day. I, I had several of them say that they had never quite met someone like me, someone that was willing to put my A on the same level as their V in the isms category, right? To treat them with respect and responsibility, respect for their belief. So yeah, as I said, I am still telling people about this great church I go to and that it helped me learn. Uh, but it's still a welcoming place and a place of love, respect, and seeking understanding.
word evangelism, what images come to mind? Maybe some obnoxious kook on a street corner somewhere shouting at you through a bullhorn? Maybe a TV preacher fleecing his flock for every dollar they have? Maybe some aggressive activists uh, with some truly disturbing protest signs, no matter what the occasion? Or maybe just some red-faced bully shaking a Bible at you at a school board meeting? Overall, at least to us UUs, the term evangelism is about as welcome to us as the words bigotry or racism. As an open, accepting, tolerant faith community, the idea of pushing our personal beliefs onto any unwilling participant seems antithetical to our very existence. And in that form, it most certainly is. We do not have a dogma. We don't have fire and brimstone. We don't even have one central book to shake at anyone. So why in the world am I up here today talking about UU evangelism? Because, believe it or not, I do believe there is a place in UUism for evangelism. Not only that, but I believe the future of our faith and even of this very church is dependent on we UUs becoming better at our own kind of evangelism. Now Webster's Dictionary defines the word evangelism as one, the winning or revival of a personal commitment to Christ, or two, a militant or crusading zeal. Clearly, the UU form of evangelism does not encompass the first and most broadly understood meaning of the word. We are not a Christian religion. While we may have our roots in Christianity, and some UUs may believe in the divinity of Christ, we modern UUs are not, in fact, default Christians. For example, I was raised a UU starting from the age of three. I completed K through 12 RE and was therefore given the equivalent of a worldwide comparative religion degree. I always saw the Jesus story as just another story told by ancient people to other ancient people as a way to make sense of a scary and uncertain world. I've always regarded the Bible as just another religious text that was written by men, edited and rewritten by men for no other purpose than to empower only a certain few men while disempowering everyone else. I don't believe in the divinity of Jesus or Muhammad or Krishna. I don't believe the supernatural experiences of Moses or the Buddha or the gurus happened by divine intervention. I don't believe in a divine. I am an atheist. So how in the world can an atheist evangelize? <laughs> Well, if you remember the second part of the definition of evangelism, it is described as a militant or crusading zeal. Now there's something I can work with. Not the militant part, because I am a devout pacifist and reject all forms of violence. And the word crusade definitely has a violent and problematic history. But the word zeal, defined as a great enthusiasm or interest, now that I've gotten spades. <laughs> As I've just demonstrated, UUs are very good at identifying what we don't believe in. What we have a harder time vocalizing is what we do believe in. As a religious group made up of people with fiercely individualized personal beliefs, how in the heck can we speak with one voice? How do we spread the good word of UUism when it, come, when it can mean whatever we want it to mean. Many times when pressed to explain UUism or what UUs believe, it's impossible to wrap it up in a 30 second sound bite. And with the changes to Article 2 that are coming around the bend after their adoption at GA this summer, 
Anyone who had an elevator pitch referencing the seven or more recently adopted eight principles are gonna have to go back to the drawing board. For those of us who've known these seven or eight principles as the cornerstone of our religious beliefs for our entire lives, the idea of scrapping this framework, some of us had memorized, is scary and uncertain. Change is uncomfortable. Change is hard. But change is the only path to progress. So nevertheless, we persist. We're constantly faced with change in our personal lives, in the nation, in the burning world around us, and even within our own religion. And with any time of change comes an opportunity to make things better, to do things in new ways that help create the world we want to live in. I truly believe that the part of the change that we need right now, as you use, we need to get loud about ourselves. Now, I know that's a scary concept to many people, but as the march towards fascism in this country is cloaked under the guise of religious freedom, it's imperative that we start pushing back and refuse to cede that notion to those gleefully taking away our rights. It's important to remember that those using their religion as a weapon against humanity are in the extreme minority. But you know who else is in the extreme minority? Us, we are. There are estimated to be only about 800,000 of us total. Well, that's one of the smallest recognized religions in the world. So why, why is it that we don't wield the same amount of power and influence uh, over our country as those religious extremists now forcing us all to live by their dogmatic laws? Well, to me, the answer comes down three factors. One, those using their religion as a political weapon against anyone they dislike have been playing the long game. They did the slow, painstaking work of getting their fellow zealots into powers of position. They have been willing to work for decades to get where they are today. And now those efforts have finally come to fruition. We need to have that same long view that they've had. We need to start thinking about our vision for the future. What kind of world do we want to see 50 years from now? Let's start planning for how we're going to make it happen. And number two, they are loud about their religious beliefs. They have no problem shouting at everyone, at every street corner, every megaphone, social media feed, and city council meeting exactly what they believe. They have zero qualms about demanding that those beliefs should be used to shape our world. This is where we fall extremely short. I suspect our religious community has an unusually high percentage of introverts who want nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> I can feel the anxiety in the room start to rise as you all think to yourselves, what is this lady asking us to do? To many of you, the idea of selling UUism to the public is about as welcome as a long, slow, painful root canal. As a result of our collective passivity about religious persuasion, we are painfully quiet about our beliefs. We are timid in our attempts to stake out our territory on moral authority. And we do not evangelize the good word of UUism. I've often joked, the BUC is a secret. Like the book and movie Fight Club, the first rule of BUC is no one talks about BUC. But unlike the book and movie, however, this has not secured us more members to our secret club. We tend to talk to one another. Maybe we talk a bit to our non-UU family members. Maybe once in a while we'll post about things we did at church. And again, we stumble through our elevator pitches about what we as UUs actually believe. I know more than once, I will admit, I have defaulted to, I'm a UU, just look it up. <laughs> that needs to change if we want to survive, not only as a church, 
but as a religion, state, nation, and planet. At a time in history when so many powerful people are using their evangelism as a tool of oppression, it becomes our moral imperative to use UU evangelism as a tool for liberation. But what do you use believe? How can we share a conviction for a religion whose definition is ever evolving? What things do we all agree on? How do we fill in you use believe in blank? When you stop to think about it, we may have many different philosophies, but we do share so many common beliefs. You use believe in justice. We believe in peace. You use believe in service. We believe in integrity. We believe in truth. We believe in dignity. You use believe in love. You use believe in using our lives in a way that honors our ancestors, serves our present world, and behaves as good stewards for the future. These are our deeply held religious beliefs. Our beliefs are solid. Our beliefs are righteous. Our beliefs are worth shouting about. <laughs> and our beliefs can be an incredibly effective tool in fighting back against those that use that's against my religion as some kind of impenetrable armor as they wreak havoc on the rest of us. I say can be, because as of now, that kind of public declaration of our beliefs has been lacking. For the last several years, I have been invoking my deeply held UU beliefs as my own kind of armor while fighting back against hatred, bigotry, cynicism, and destruction. I've also used my deeply held UU beliefs to help me decide how to cope with the troubled world around me. I use, you, I use these beliefs as a gut check for myself when I feel the anger, despair, and the siren song of nihilism seeping into my soul. Our deeply held religious beliefs of justice, peace, service, integrity, truth, dignity, love, have helped me choose which path to take at every fork in the road. And I know if they've helped me that much, they would probably help others as well. To keep these righteous beliefs to myself feels to me like the closest equivalent to sin for a UU. I don't want UUism to remain a secret. I want to share our secret, sacred beliefs with the world. And I want to share those beliefs with zeal. <laughs> I'm making a commitment to practice UU evangelism in my life. So what does that look like? Well, I believe the most needed form of it today looks like using our UU principles, values, and beliefs as a rebuttal to harmful laws, policies, and practices we want to see changed. Imagine responding to climate denialism online with a sentence like, my, the failure to address climate change is not only an existential threat, but it's also against my deeply held religious UU beliefs that teach me respect for the interconnected web of life. So increasing carbon emissions is against my religion. Imagine responding in a conversation with an anti-choice person who's using their personal religious objections to abortion to justify forcing abortion bans onto everyone else with, well, abortion bans are against my deeply held religious beliefs of justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. So abortion bans are against my religion. Imagine responding to someone using their religion to justify homophobia and transphobia with these laws directed at harming the LGBTQ plus community are against my deeply held religious beliefs of the inherent worth and dignity of every person. So don't say gay laws are against my religion. Those doing harm love to play the religion card. 
Well, we can play that card too. Imagine insisting the world recognize our UU beliefs as just as valid and worthy of deference as any other religious dogma. That is the very heart of UU evangelism. But UU evangelism is more than just words, it's actions. What does that look like? Well, looks like sharing invitations to everyone around you to join us on Sundays or in social, social or environmental justice actions or for special events. It looks like wearing UU swag with literally wearing your beliefs on your sleeve, hoping to spark a conversation. It looks like breaking out those bumper stickers and displaying for all to see that you are a hashtag proud UU. We're gonna be making yard signs during coffee hour today and uh, we will have some uh, available for sign up that are already nicely made. Because <laughs> not everybody has the same artistic abilities. Um, but we're gonna do that and let our neighbors know what you use believe. Think of it as a UU version of the bathtub Madonnas that adorn so many of the lawns of our neighbors. Oh, and you know that third thing that has made Christian evangelists so successful at extreme minority rule? Repetition. You can probably rattle off some of the common yelling points of evangelicals proselytizing to you, usually in inappropriate settings, right? By the way, inappropriate settings include the East Lansing UU Church, when, back in June of this year, three evangelical Christians disrupted their coffee hour and shouted at congregants eating bagels and talking. They yelled at our fellow UUs in their own sacred space, such classics as, repent, Jesus died for your sins, you will be judged, the Bible is clear about X, Y, and Z, you're all going to hell, God hates, fill in the blank, True story, I'm sorry to say. And while those sentiments are vile, you can't deny they're memorable and easily repeatable. And uh, whether you believe them or not, they stick. My challenge to you is to create your own memorable and easily repeatable UU talking points. Now here's where we have a clear advantage. UUs are some of the most well-educated, intelligent, and overly loquacious people on the planet. Let's take that talent and create our own evangelical UU messaging that introduces ourselves to the nuns, those with no religion, not Catholic nuns, who are the fastest growing religious affiliation in the country. Let's tell those people we're here. Let's tell those people what we believe. Let's tell those people how our UU beliefs can create the world we all want to live in in 5, 10, 50, 100 years from now. Invite the people in. Invite the people to join us. Invite the people to share our beloved community. If we want people to come out of their comfort zones to come check out UUism, then we have to be willing to step out of our comfort zones and start directly asking people to check us out. There are so many people out there who believe what we believe, who share our same values, and who wish for the same future that we do, but they just don't know that we exist <laughs> right here on Woodward Avenue in Bloomfield Hills. They don't know that there's likely a UU congregation somewhere near where they live and they certainly don't know that we want them to join our beloved community. How could they if we don't share the good word about UUism? Organized religion is at an all-time low for many valid reasons, but the need for community, connection, and spiritual growth hasn't gone away. The need to be part of something bigger than ourselves never ceases to exist. We have a chance to introduce people turned off by organized religion to our disorganized religion. We have so much good to offer our fellow humans. We can't keep this secret any longer. 
We may be a gentle, angry people. But the future of UUism and of our very world requires us to become loud and proud, gentle, angry people. Hashtag proud UU. In one minute, I'll ask you to stand and sing a hymn that you're not particularly familiar with. The words of the hymn follow today's message. Be ours a religion which, like sunshine, goes everywhere. Its temple, all space. Its shrine, the good heart. Its creed, all truth. Its ritual, works of love. The band is going to play it through completely while you remain seated. And then comes the big gesture. <laughs> and I hope the large voice. Come to the time in our service where we extinguish our chalice, and hopefully in extinguishing the chalice, we send a little bit of that light out with you. To soulfully survive the world's mayhem, Heather Rian Star. May whatever gatherings or activities we engage in this Sunday afternoon help restore us. Our connections to one another, our sense of hope, beauty, and fun in the world. Our deep knowing that we have to take care of ourselves and each other with the love and joy if we are to soulfully survive the world's mayhem. <laughs> 